Hello, I am Parkerway, and I'm going to show you today how to create this beautiful sugarcane farm. Currently, I am in my survival world, and this is an example I built there. Very efficient, you can see lots of sugarcane, and is definitely necessary if you need, if you're going to be flying around with rockets, or you're going to be doing lots of villager trading to get books. You need an efficient sugarcane farm. So, I'm going to hop into a, a creative world, and I'm going to get this tutorial started. So, this is where we're going to be constructing this sugarcane farm, and I'm making it 20 by 40. Um, with this design, you can make it uh, any length long. It has to be 20 blocks wide. And the materials you need to make this in survival, um, you need 18 slime blocks, 2 sticky pistons, 4 observers, 2 redstone repeaters, 11 redstone dust. For hoppers, I would recommend at least 42. You can get away with only 21. 42 is, I'd say, the minimum if you want to have an efficient farm that doesn't get clogged up at any point. And then you need uh, 10 minecarts with hoppers. In terms of other things, um, all this stuff here depends on how big you make it. Because I'm making it 40 blocks long, you need uh, 10 stacks of dirt, 2.5 stacks of any slabs. Dirt can also be replaced with grass or sand, although sand would make it really annoying because sand falls. Um, you need 64 and 26 powered rails. You can get away with less, but I'd say this is about the minimum if you want your thing to be reliable all the time. And for any powered rails, you also need that many torches. Then you also need um, as many, basically, the total number of rails must equal the total number of dirt plus the total number of slabs. So for for this number of everything else, we needed um, 11 stacks and 6 rails. So anyways, I'm just going to take some of this stuff because I'm a creative. I don't need to collect everything, just one of each. And we're going to get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to, um, uh, oh, forgot to mention, we also need um, our uh, a double chest, or I'd say, uh, yeah, two double chests, so four chests. Should've, should've mentioned that a second ago. Whatever. Um, first thing we need to do, where do our hoppers go? Hoppers. Forgot to pick those up. Um, this has not gone well so far. First thing we want to do, dig down to right here. And then here we're going to place our double chests. This is right on the edge of the farm. So the 20 by 20 area starts in here. It's not, this is not, the boundary is not included within the 20 by 20. So we want our double chest, and then from behind there, we're going to want to have our hoppers leading into it, and we're going to want to basically dig a, uh, a trench in the ground for our hoppers to exist in. Alright, so once you've got hoppers going all the way across, now it's time to place in the rails, and this is the uh, one of the boring parts of this farm. So. This is going to take a while, but you have to do it. You just want to place in the rails. You make sure you d they don't connect like this, but you want to place in the rails such as this. So um, you want powered rails here, right on block number five, and then you want eight regular rails. Once you have eight, you want to place another powered rail. Now I should mention, before you place powered rails, you also want to dig down two blocks and place a torch. Cover it up, and then put the powered rail on top so it actually becomes powered. And... Uh, you're going to do that for a bit. Once you're nearing the end here, what you're going to want to do is instead of waiting till you get to the end to place the next powered rail, you're going to want to place it a bit closer, as you see right here. And then you're going to just turn it around, and then everywhere you add power rails on the way out, you want powered rails on the way back. So, because they're all in the same place every time, when you place down the torches, you don't actually have to do them when you're placing down the rails. You can just make a big trench going all the way across. And once you do that, you can just place torches all underneath here in every single block. Oops, don't want them all walls here. And then, because there's going to be hard rails on this on every row. So, once you get this railway extended back to the end over here, all you need to do is just uh, connect it up. And then basically repeat the same thing nine more times to create ten loops of rail. Alright, so I've got all these rails placed in now. Next step is to uh, put in the minecarts. So, what you want to do is you want to place them all in first before you do anything. And you just want to place them on uh, every other rail, like I wasn't doing a second ago, but I am doing now. Um, and then you just want to push them off one after the other. Just get them going all at once, sort of. Alright, and as you can see... Um, these minecarts are here. Once they're here, they'll start picking up items from the top. Now, at this point, it's a good idea to, first of all, have all this, all the area around this lit up if you're doing this in survival, just so, you know, you don't have a creeper come up and ruin all your work. 
And also, you want to put walls around here just so the minecarts, like, don't get, you know, messed up by anything. Or screwed around, you know, if, like, a chicken walks onto the tracks, they're going to mess the whole thing up. And it's going to be really hard to fix, so... Just putting walls around the outside is a very good idea. I won't be doing that for the purposes of this tutorial, but know that it is strongly recommended. So, next thing you need to do is take your dirt, and you basically just need to cover this whole area, but, this is a big but, you don't want to cover it, like, entirely with dirt. You want to leave holes in a pattern like this. So you want a hole here, and then you want to take four blocks, and then another hole, and then another one. But, it is how between the rows the holes interact that is important. You want a hole here, and another one here. So you want them offset by two blocks each time, and then again, you want the hole offset by two blocks left by the dirt. And of course, in these holes you're going to place your slabs, and you're going to make sure they're on the bottom, like this. And so you're going to do that for the whole thing. Ha, huh, the whole thing. And it should end up looking uh, something like... It should look something like this, with this pattern of, like, the star here, sort of. This, the the off-axis square. That's what the whole thing should look like. So I'm going to go finish doing that. And I'll be back in a moment. Alright, so I've finished putting in the dirt and stuff in the slabs. I've also put this glass around the sides. So when, because of course we're going to fill these holes with water here, with the slabs in them. So that's just to keep all the water from falling out. So also let's do that right now. Um, so when the water goes in, it just goes, you want to click on the side of the block that the slab's next to and just place in the water. Make sure it doesn't go on the tracks because that would be annoying. And yeah, you just want to do this throughout the entire thing. So I guess I'll see you in a moment again. Alright, so all the water has been placed in, and now it's time to actually build the flying machine. So this is the part that is the good part, I suppose. I don't know. So, you want to start over on this corner right here, one away from the wall. And you want to go, you want to have any block on the edge here. I'm just going to use glass for the sake of example. And, i going to clear up my inventory eventually, but you just want to go tell the midpoint you see is right here so you just want to go right into the midpoint and then you want your slime blocks to be like this over here like so so you have one this one's two away from the wall this one's one away from the wall and then you want to get yourself sticky piston place it here facing this way and another one facing this way and then you need to get two of your observers and have one sort of build up something right here and place it against that and then do the same thing but on the other side and place this observer like so oh nope that's the wrong block and I'll place it facing into the slime block you need to use slime blocks for this not honey blocks by the way so then you want to get a furnace I know I didn't put that in the chest earlier but like it's, it's eight cobblestone but I also forgot about it um and you just want it right here next to the sub. After you've got this thing built with the hopper in and the furnace and stuff, you want to go to the fourth block right here, one to the right of the rest of the stuff here, or whatever side the hopper or the furnace is not on here. And you want to go all the way to the end and just place a furnace right here for later. Then you want to go over here, like I just did, and place an observer from the top block here, facing into this way, or I guess the face is over here, but it's pointing this way. Then you want to have it pointing into a block. Then you want two blocks down, you want some redstone dust on top of these, and then you, you want a block, and then a redstone repeater set to four, and then an additional repeater set to four. And I should mention that you actually need one more repeater than I thought, than I said earlier, so, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you want the, uh, blocks over here, and at this point, you want to block off this uh, flying machine for moving for a moment as you place in the rest of the redstone here just so it doesn't start off on its own and then uh, what you can do to test this if you're so inclined is you can just once you've got the furnace in over there of course you can just place in a redstone torch on the face of this observer and that'll start the thing moving as you can see It'll move across, and what it'll do once it's moving, it'll swipe all the uh, redstone, or sorry, not the redstone, the sugar cane away. And 
And once it's stopped on this side, you need to build a little, little bit more. You want another furnace right here just to keep it from moving again. And then you want an observer facing from here. And you want a block. And then a redstone dust. And then another block. And then another redstone dust. And then you want two repeaters. Then you can break this furnace here. You need this block to be a repeater on. Missed that a moment ago. Just temporarily replace a, put a torch down here, and that'll set it off the other way again. And of course, from now on, you don't actually need to do that. Set it off manually. It'll go automatically once the sugar cane's grown. And by the way, you need to plant all the sugar cane at this point. And you build all the walls in the form. One other consideration you might want to do is plant grass and spread all over the dirt, but that's basically all the redstone stuff. You just need to build walls and a roof and plant all the sugarcane and all the available dirt slots, and that's it. You got a sugarcane farm. Congratulations. So, uh, thank you for watching. I've been Parberway. If you like this video, you could leave a like. That would be a logical thing to do. If you really liked it, you could even subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye. More content will be coming in the future.